Number 13 on the gas law problems. Uh, it doesn't give you any sort of equation to work with, so you gotta like piece together the equation from the question. So some cruel or idiot chemistry teacher put this question together. Uh, so number 13, it says phosphorus trichloride is produced. So that means on the product side, you're gonna have phosphorus trichloride, PCl3 is produced by reacting PO5 with chlorine gas. So it's telling us our reactants are PO5 and chlorine gas. And if you remember, chlorine is a diatomic gas, so it's gonna be a PO5 plus Cl2. And then it says that elemental oxygen is a byproduct. So that means it's gonna be, those oxygens end up there as O2, also a diatomic gas. All right, then it goes on to tell us, no, first we probably wanna balance that. So, um, let's see, you got chlorines at a two and a three, so they'll, the earliest they can meet up is six or a multiple of six. You got oxygen at five and two, so the least common multiple of five and, five and two is 10. So this has to get a two and a five there. And that means two phosphoruses, so a two there. Uh, that's cool because that gives me six chlorines and then I can come over here, put a three on the elemental chlorine, two phosphoruses, two phosphorus, six chlorines, six chlorines, 10 oxygens, 10 oxygens. All right, so it's balanced. And then we can get into the question itself. It says, how many liters of PCL3, so we're looking at liters of that guy, can be produced from the reaction of 62 liters, so 62 liters of PO5, and 84 liters of Cl2. At a constant, two atmospheres and a temperature of 350 Kelvin. So hopefully you've been doing chemistry for a while. So this should read to you like a stoichiometry problem. They give us information about one substance. Actually, they give us information about two of these substances. Ask us about another substance. So feels like a stoichiometry problem. Now the fact that they told us about both reactants uh, should make the little hairs on the back of your neck stand up and say this is a limiting reactant problem. And remember with limiting reactant problems, you have to uh, find out how much product can be made from each of the reactants and then the less amount of product equals your limiting reactant and the greater amount of product would be your excess reactant. Now from 62 liters, 84 liters, and then it gave us a set of conditions. It said that the constant pressure of two atmospheres and a temperature of 350 Kelvin. So like any good stoichiometry problem, you're gonna take the given information, you're gonna turn that to moles. Then you're gonna go moles of the initial substance to moles of the inquired about substance, then moles of that to the final liters. Now in determining what's the limiting reactant and what's the excess reactant, moles is good enough. So we just need to figure out from 62 liters of PO5 and 84 liters of Cl2, how many moles of PCl3 could we make? And then we could just take that final step of converting from moles to liters. Now the only way I know to get moles from liters of a gas, pressure, and temperature is to use the ideal gas law. So we're gonna be using PV equals NRT, and we're gonna rearrange that because we're interested in moles, and so we're gonna rewrite that. We're gonna divide the RT over to that side. So it's gonna be moles equals pressure times volume divided by R times T. Now, 
we'll do the PO5 first. So PO5 the pressure is two atmospheres the volume is 62 liters r is what it always is 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters per mole kelvin and t is in the problem it tells us 350 kelvin cool so no converting 350 kelvin which is two sig figs 62 liters two sig figs so whatever answer we get at the end we're going to round that to two significant figures all right so we'll plug that info in to the equation so we're going to go 2.00 times 62 divided by 0 0.0821 times 350 Kelvin. And that's going to equal 2 times 62 divided by 0 0.0821 times 350. All right, and that ends up at four point, we're gonna keep uh, more than two sig figs for right now, we'll round at the very end. So it equaled 4.315, so we'll put down 4.315 moles. And then I'm actually going to kind of make a little chart here. All right, so we'll just keep that going. And it's all the same conditions for the chlorine. So that means over here in this equation, I, right, because it's still 2.00, it's 62, or it's not 62, it's 84, it's 0 .0. 821 and it's 350 Kelvin. So then uh, I can sub in 84 into this exact same equation and figure out how many moles we could make from the chlorine. So 2 times 84 divided by 0 0.0821 times 350. And that gives me 5.847, 5.847 moles. All right, so we figured out, that's our first step. So it's a long first step, but we figured out how many moles of each of the reactants we have. Now we need to figure out with this many moles of each reactant, how many moles of the product? Well, it's 4.315 moles of PO5 times two moles of PCL3 for every two moles of PO5. So I have enough uh, phosphorus pentoxide to make 4.315 moles of PCL3. 5.847 moles of Cl2 times, uh, that's a two to three ratio, two moles of PCL, PCL3 for every three moles of elemental chlorine and so that I have to punch into the calculator. And that comes out to be 3.8977. 3.8977 moles of PCL3. Since that is the lower amount of product, that means that Cl2 is my limiting reactant 
four. Come on, Bix. Uh, that's my limiting reactant, and PO5 is the excess reactant. So the amount of moles of PCL3 I'm gonna make is this value right here, 3.8977 moles of PCL3. Now, all if the question just asks for moles of PCL3, we'd be done with this infernal thing, but uh, it's not, it asks for liters, and so we gotta do another PV equals NRT, another ideal gas law problem. This time we're solving for volume. but the conditions are the same. So it's still two atmospheres, it's still 350 Kelvin, and R is still constant, cause you know, it's a constant, so it's always that. Oh. <laughs> So if we take PV equals NRT and we want volume, you're going to divide P over to that other side. So you end up with volume equals NRT over P. Conditions are the same, so it's still two atmospheres. Temperature's still at 350 Kelvin. So we're going to plug it in. Our number of moles was 3.8. 977 times 0 0.0821 times 350 divided by 2.00. And we will get the volume finally. And it comes out to be 56. Uh, on the nose and uh, it needed to be two sig figs. So cool, we're gonna put down 56 liters of PCL3. Now we went, that was a lot of work. It was, you know, could have gotten lost a little bit in there, I suppose. And now you'll really hate me because I'm gonna show you a trick. If you're dealing with nothing but gases, and the conditions are constant for the reactants and for the products, you don't actually, we kept using the same pressure and the same temperature and the same value for R, and uh, so we ended up converting to moles and converting back, but with the same numbers. And so it's something called Avogadro's Law. Uh, under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, volume and moles are proportional to one another. So while you could read this as, you should probably read this as, two moles of PO5 plus three moles of chlorine yields two moles of PCL3, you could also read it, according to Avogadro's law, as two liters of PO5 plus three liters of Cl2 makes two liters of PCL3. Now, when is that true? So Avogadro's law is only true when you're looking at only gaseous substances and you're at the same pressure and same temperature. So it's going to drastically simplify what we just did. And so in reality, we could have worked that whole problem out. We're probably going on 10 minutes now, but I could just set it up as 62 liters of PO5 times two liters PCL3 for every two liters of PO5. And so that means I have enough PO5 to make 62 liters of PCL3. And then same deal of 84 liters of Cl2 times and two liters of PCL3 for every three liters of Cl2. Punch that into your calculator, 84 times two thirds, and you get, well, 56. So uh, it's, and that'd be liters. So that's a shortcut. It only works some of the time. 
Uh, it's good old fashioned stoichiometry and PV equals an RT, works every time, but you know, that's pretty convenient. 